dear colleagues, and thank you to the AIO for inviting me. Um, we will now have a look at the clinical applications and outcomes of our session of Manufacturing Restorations, Does the Technique Matter? So, I would like to talk about where are we coming from, where are we today, and where are we heading to? Let's start with where we are coming from. So, we know that there is a lot of literature that shows us that our gold standards up to, to now is the metal ceramic restoration for implants. And uh, we do have very good survival rates up to five years and also long term uh, that show us that we, we, it works well and that we have like 98-99% of survival rates. But nevertheless, the success rate is lower than that. And chipping is one of the main issues we have to deal with. And so, this is why we are actually also so continuing to search for other options. Another option, especially for the aesthetic zone, is the one-piece screw-retained uh, veneered CAD-CAM zirconia abutment. This is a very, very uh, interesting and good working uh, solution, but also rather expensive. And we can see that survival rates are quite high. Here, this is one study, of course, not a very long-term study, but it shows 100% survival rate and no chipping. On the other hand, we still have some problems with wear, for, for example, always depending on which connection type we are using, but the wear between the titanium and the zirconia may uh, cause problems, as well as fractures that um, might happen depending on the system we are using. So, um, having a look now at the all ceramic restorations, we can see that survival rates are a bit below our gold standard of metal ceramics. And especially if we look into the multi-unit uh, restorations, there we can see that survival rates are even lower with around about 93%. And this is of course something that clinically we do not like to accept. So, a main problem remains our chipping. And now, what is our wish? What do we need? Well, the aim is to reduce this amount of chipping and on the other hand, to have a restoration that is less costly, costly less expensive and of course, by maintaining, on the other hand, quality, aesthetics, predictability and efficiency. To do so, let us have a look where we are today. For the single unit restorations, we have the options that I already mentioned, so metal ceramic on the first side, then the one-piece zirconia abutment, which is directly veneered, and we have the possibility to do an all-ceramic crown um, cemented onto a titanium or zirconia stock abutment and uh, veneered. And then we have the option today to work monolithically. So having a monolithic uh, crown on a titanium base, stained and glazed, or facially veneered. And now let's have a closer look into this option. So on the material choice point of view, we have on the one hand the high strength materials, oxide ceramic, then we have the lithium disilicate, we also have hybrid ceramics that are upcoming, and um, just to make sure, nowadays we really have a lot of different uh, high strength materials. The oxide ceramic, the zirconia, you know that by now we even have uh, some zirconias that are going into the direction of less strength because they are more translucent. And so we just have to be aware of all these types of uh, materials that uh, when we select one, we really make sure that it is valid for the restoration we actually want to do. So where are we going to now uh, cement this uh, reconstruction onto? And there we have the possibility of work with tie bases. So having a look at the titanium base concept, which is rather new, we don't have so many studies, but we do have some preclinical studies here here are two studies showing uh, from our University of Geneva that it is actually a very valid treatment option. We can see they tested the mechanical stability of, um, of monolithic CAD-CAM fabricated crowns on titanium bases. And they concluded here that the titanium base hybrid abutment crown concept is a valid option, is a promising alternative. So, on the other hand, we are not sure yet about the interface between the crown and the titanium base. This is something that we will have to check intra-orally in clinical studies long term. So there remains certain question marks, of course. 
And what we can say by now for the moment is that the polymer infiltrated ceramic network materials are not certainly not the first choice for the moment because uh, they come along with more problems, with uh, more complications, at least what we saw in our preclinical pre studies. So now let's move on to the clinical part. This is a patient that received a bone level tapered implant and then received lithium disilicate crown on, uh, bonded onto a titanium base. And we can see that two years later, soft tissue grew. We have even a better situation uh, of the papilla and we are quite happy with this result. There was no chipping, no debonding. And this is a way, a technique that we really use often nowadays in our clinic and it seems to work very well. So. Uh, now coming to a different case, more difficult because in the anterior region, a patient with a high smile line, here things were a little bit more complicated. The tooth had to be extracted. After the extraction, we waited, we inserted our bone level tapered implant, and after having waited, we prepared our uh, reconstruction. It was a restoration of lithium disilicate. And after, um, after having milled this, we then go into the, uh, into the laboratory. Here you can see that the technician, it was Vincent Famer, he was uh, just uh, doing a little cutback in order to be able to do a facial veneering. This facial veneering is especially very helpful for the, uh, for the aesthetic area. So what we do have to take, make sure is that we do not veneer in the occlusal parts, especially now also uh, talking about the posterior area where we have high forces. And if we don't uh, put the veneering ceramic on the occlusal surface and on the functioning surface, then we think that this will reduce the risk for chipping quite a lot. So this patient received the crown and you can see that it was indeed a very difficult case because of the high smile line. And if you have a close look at it, then you will see that there is a gray shimmer here. And this gray shimmer is something that we note when we are using our titanium bases in the front combined with lithium disilicate. It sometimes may be a limitation that we just have to be aware of. So we can see this gray shimmer uh, due to the rather white neighboring teeth and um, it might, so the titanium base might have an impact on our soft tissue, on the surrounding soft tissue. What we know by now, um, because we did a study and looked at the different cements to use, it does help the cement, the choice of the cement has an impact on this uh, tooth color and on the restoration color. So using an opaque cement will already help to cover this grayish shimmer. Um, having a look now at one clinical study that we are doing, it is an ongoing study. We are using bone level tapered implants. We are inserting them. 30 patients receive an immediate implant, 30 patients receive an early placement, and then the patients receive, receive randomized either a lithium disilicate crown or a zirconia restoration on a titanium base. And this is a study now going on already for four years and we can see really that it seems to work. There is barely any problems. We did see one early implant failure and we had one extended chipping, but that was all. There was no debonding, there was no other uh, chipping and no screw loosening. So very promising results. We are looking forward to see how this will develop in the long term. But um, just to tell you that this is the way we, we feel quite self when treating our patients in Geneva. Having a look at a second clinical study that is also um, done in Geneva by Professor Scherer and her group. We, she there uh, has a control group of the uh, metal ceramic restorations and then two uh, test groups, monolithic lithium disilicate and monolithic polymer infiltrated ceramic network. And having a look at the results in this study, we can see that especially the polymer infiltrated ceramic network uh, material seems to come along with problems. And so we are a little bit cautious on that side using these materials for the moment. Um, as we can see, uh, problems such as wear, discoloration, uh, and also plaque accumulation on the side of the polymer infiltrated ceramic network material. So now let's have a look at the multiple unit restorations. 
So here we have less choice. We have, of course, our metal ceramic uh, restorations as a gold standard. Then we have the option uh, to use zirconia, uh, veneered and cemented onto customized uh, titanium abutments. And if we want to go monolithically, then we have the possibility um, to use monolithic zirconia and uh, bonded onto titanium bases and then stained and polished and or facially veneered. So from the choice of material, we uh, have less choice. We have no more the possibility to go with um, less strong materials. So we will stay on the left hand side with the oxide ceramics. And there we will be really on, on the side of the high strength materials and not the less strong, uh, more translucent zirconia that we can now find on the market too. So looking at the studies and the reviews that have been done, we know that this fully um, veneered zirconia restorations come along with a lot of fractures of the veneering ceramic. And by now for today, we know that it is around about 50% of chipping. And these reviews of course include studies where the restorations have been fully veneered. So today we will have a look at the monolithic restorations maybe only facially veneered, but no more occlusally veneered. And we do expect that this will improve the risk of chipping. Um, and by now we must say though that there are not a lot of clinical studies yet, and of course no long-term studies. So this is something we have to wait for. Having now um, a little conclusion of what, where we are, we know that for the single unit, we have multiple possibilities to manufacture. We have rather high chipping rates still. Uh, we have our gold, uh, so our porcelain fused to metal as the gold standard. We can work direct on, on, uh, on abutments directly veneered where we have a problem maybe with the wear and with the fracture risk. And then we have the monolithic restoration that uh, show very good short to midterm results and are in fact really promising. On the multi-unit uh, side, we have again our porcelain fused to metal restoration as the gold standard. Uh, we have the conventionally veneered cemented zirconia uh, multi-unit restorations, which present very high chipping and rates and therefore problems. And uh, to summarize, our monolithic approach has a high potential to reduce chipping. Um, we work only stain and glazed or polished. And the titanium base seems to be a concept that uh, works very well. And um, it is, of course, not last but not least, uh, rather efficient and uh, has comes along with uh, low cost, so less expensive. So let's have a look where we are going to. Um, here we have a typical patient. It's a patient that comes and she doesn't want to come very often. She doesn't want to come uh, or she doesn't want to wait a long time for her restoration and she doesn't want to spend a lot of money. So this patient is a patient where we did an intraoral scan. We planned the surgery and uh, put the implant. Afterwards, directly at the surgery day, we inserted the scan body on the implant. And then, as you can see here, we insert uh, the scan body. We have uh, an intra-surgical scan of the situation. And then uh, we have this STL data that we can afterwards use for the fabrication and the design, first of all, of the crown. So our technician has the possibility to know exactly where the implant is put already on the day of implant insertion and is then able to uh, design the crown and uh, he prints the model. So the model is printed. We use this in order to work on our crown uh, with the implant analog that you can see and uh, afterwards the, the crown here, it is a monolithic zirconia crown that is uh, bonded onto the titanium base. Then at the second surgery, so the reopening, we already have the crown finished and the crown can be inserted intraorally. So this is a way to go. This is of course something that is uh, not yet really addressed in literature so much, but it is our path to go to have a solution that is rather fast, that the patient doesn't need to wait a long time. It is decent uh, for the posterior area, maybe of course not for the highly aesthetic zone, 
but certainly a possibility to, to work digitally, to improve in time efficiency and also to reduce costs. So open questions, let's have a look what, is, uh, what are the open questions. Of course there is still a lot of work to do but we can say that all in all our uh, approach to work monolithically and on titanium basis is uh, I guess the good way to go and some questions that uh, might have to be worked on are of course the long-term results so we are still waiting for long-term results of these monolithic restorations. Then the question of debonding, will we have problems with debonding, will we have problems with chipping in the long term, uh, what about the biological outcomes, will we have problem having the titanium base close to the implant, close to the bone or not, and all the titanium uh, inside the, or beneath the mucosa. And last but not least, how can we improve aesthetics even more, especially for the highly aesthetic zone? So these are some of the questions that we will address in our future studies and that uh, will help to figure out which way to go in the long term. So with this, I would like to thank you for your attention and of course, a big thank you to my team in Geneva.